Hi there. How's it going? Listen, I'm going to be talking about quartz. Uh, yeah, I know. Not exactly the most exciting of, sub of substances. It's not even the most exciting of gemstones, honestly. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the romance of a diamond or rubies or emeralds um, or even jade, like I talked about earlier. It, it's it seems boring, honestly. It. It, and it can be boring, I guess, um, if nothing else, because it's common. Um, it is one of the most common minerals on the planet. You can find it everywhere, and you can find, you know, my, you know, small deposits of it in other minerals like granite and things like that. So I mean, it's everywhere. So. Why am I talking about it? Because, I mean, most of the time when I talk about the gemstones, I talk about how you can use them in, like, a magical context of building a more interesting magical world or using them in your game or something like that. So why am I talking about quartz? All right. First off, it is very common. And because it is very common, it's got lots of variety to it. Um, this is a bit of geode of amethyst. You can see that. Now, you might be saying, well, that's amethyst. Well, amethyst is a form of quartz. So it's citrine and rose quartz, of course, smoky quartz. Uh, Castledani. Castledani is a form of quartz. Uh, uh, Quartz comes in a couple of different varieties. It comes in the normal sort of rock crystal version that we're familiar with, which is by nature clear. Um, and forms uh, from sodium dioxide. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it forms everywhere. I mean, basically uh, sort of heat, oxygen, sodium and combined and it's there I mean it's all over the place uh, rock the rock crystal form is the one like this so this is the one that this is the form that everybody is familiar with now the thing with that is uh, they have another form of, of quartz crystal which is sometimes called micro crystal but I prefer the term because I thought it was neat when I first heard it, crypto crystalline, which really boils down to that the crystals are too small for you to tell, uh, and you end up with things like agate, carnelian, heliotrope, jasper. All of those are also quartz. So uh, you know when you start talking about quartz, you begin to realize it is everywhere and it's in so many things that you might not be aware of right so you know when you find this lovely stone um, and you know some people might not be familiar with amethyst but I think most people are it's a beautiful purple and when you find it in a gemstone you know as a uh, like in a ring or something it's stunning in how purple it can get. It can get from a sort of a faint purple, which is um, <clears throat> uh, sort of an orchid color, to just super deep dark, almost almost red or blue. And it can go anywhere in between. Um, and because it's essentially the same material as citrine, uh, which is yellow, hence the name citrine. Um, it, you can often find amethyst and citrine in the same crystal, which I believe is going by the name of ametrine now, which is basically one end is yellow and one end is purple, which is neat. I, I think it's neat anyway. Um, 
Uh, there's a green version, uh, which is sometimes sold as Prassialite, but it, at one time it was also known as Green Amethyst. Um, so you can find lots and lots and lots of different colors of stone and different uh, stone types all over the place that uh, yeah you know you might not have thought of honestly. Now it it gets more interesting because quartz is uh, piezoelectric. It turns mechanical force into electricity. Uh, and vice versa, I guess. Uh, it, call, it, it, it reacts to electricity, electrical charge, and, uh, and mechanical uh, energy applied to it can generate an electrical effect. That sounds super complicated, and honestly, I'm not enough of a physics student to explain how it works, but it does mean that it has a history of being tied to energy. Now, I am not one of the new age types. I have nothing against people who are. It's just not my bag. Uh, so I don't put a lot of stock in, you know, healing crystals and things like that. But when you're building a magical uh, structure, a magical... Uh, framework for your game world you kind of want to be aware of that sort of thing um and so you know looking at quartz as a means of storing energy or attenuating energy in some way is a pretty simple no-brainer use for the gemstone now uh you know we all think of the the, the sort of uh triagonal crystal system sort of set up here uh, that can have ends at a, a six-sided pyramid in a perfect form anyway um, and uh, you know sort of a long crystal uh, and that's what you picture with these but most of the time what you end up with is this sort of conv convoluted mess of crystals growing into each other finding the long ones is rare it's hard uh, finding them in this form is actually, um, you know, not ex you have to know what you're doing. Because if you look at the back of it, this does not look like a crystal from outside. It's a geode. The crystals formed on the inside like a bubble. And the crystals grew in towards the center. So when you find it on the outside, it looks like an ordinary stone. You have to crack it open so there's some potential there for finding hidden you know uh, hidden power in stones you know something that doesn't necessarily look like it's quartz until you crack it open something that doesn't look like a magical crystal until you crack it open that's that's another suggestion on how to use it in that regard now uh, the micro crystal inversions give you a whole different uh, thing that you can do with it because it means that you end up with this sort of uh, it, it's not as sharp it doesn't have as as many edges to it uh, and because of that you end up with the possibility of say carving it into a cameo as a, a for instance uh, or some other sort of uh, carved structure um, and uh, I, yeah, I'll be putting some pictures up of what those might look like and what the stones actually look like um, they've been carving figurines out of quartz crystal for a long long time so much like jade it could be used for that sort of thing now the Mohs scale on it uh, yeah, it's weird it varies quite a bit in where you uh, find it um, and because it is the structure that it is it's relatively easy to break off pieces if it's not one single crystal um, what this means is it doesn't 
really make a great weapon material, but it's magic. You can figure it out. Um, beyond that, I think the other tack to take with it in your world, your game world, is to look at the uh, what the crystal says about the region that it's found in. One of the peculiarities of quartz is that it infests everything, right? It ends up in boulders and various other kinds of stone. It also picks up things. Um, California is known for its gold deposits. Now, that's pretty well known at this point. What people may not realize is that the sort of massive amounts of gold, the, the big deposits that were in the mountains, were actually trapped in quartz. They were bits of it trapped inside the quartz crystal. As you break the quartz crystal down, then you would free up the gold. Um, there's something in that, I think. You know, imagine if uh, the horrible horrible uh, battle against the terrible foul creature in your past happened in a place with a lot of volcanic activity and you know the seas meeting a volcano and you know the typical sort of uh muhaha battle to, to, to end the world and you beat the bad guy but bits of his uh body or bits of his blood end up trapped by the quartz that forms there and then millions of years later, people find it. It's just an idea, but uh, you, you can find forms of quartz which contain other materials. It's fairly common actually, and we sell, you know, sell them as gemstones sometimes, depending on what it looks like. Um, so it's not unreasonable to believe that you could have other substances trapped inside, like, uh, you know, the indestructible blood of a, a god or something like that, not just gold or things like that. Um, beyond that, I, I think that uh, also the commonality of it makes for an interesting choice as for as a material if you're going the way of magic as technology uh, I love the Eberron setting it's a great setting big fan and one of the, the defining traits of it is the sort of sort of magic as technology uh, where uh, you know, they have lightning rails and things like that. Uh, they use dragon shards as the uh, the sort of defining magical item to, to power all these things. But you could easily justify using a form of quartz as the medium of energy transfer. It's an idea. Um, of course, lots of the, the New Age types will talk about the storing and focusing of energy so you could certainly use it as a, a focus uh, I've played in a game where it was used as a psionic focus uh, that you had to have a particular kind of crystal to, to, to make a psionic focus so that you could direct your energies um, and so having something like that and maybe have it take on the aspects of the region that it's found in so you have quartz from a volcanic region you're good at using it for fire magic or you're finding quartz uh, on top of a mountain it might be good for air magic just an idea um, I, 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 I do think that the carved crystal is definitely a direction to take making uh, items like artifacts uh, that are tied to a particular entity out of quartz is a is a, is a good choice 
Um, and of course, because it is used as a gemstone too, you know, having a ring uh, with you know, quartz can be defined as some sort of tie to magic. Um, you know, amethyst makes a great you know gemstone, like I said, and if you it's also relatively easy to find so you could get a, a fairly large piece um and really you want your uh your magical items to be flashy right so you know have the big honking ring with a with, with, with the uh, uh large amethyst sitting on the back of it or the large citrine or prasiolite or smoky quartz or whatever and you know have that as the de description of it because you can picture that in your head pretty easily uh, and the uh, having the construction of it make a certain amount of sense in a real world sense uh, there is you know uh, I, a, a fairly easy examples that you found of large stones of amethyst or large stones of this finding a large diamond or a large ruby is harder so you know maybe the guy who makes the ring of protection plus one uses things like quartz and various quartz uh, derivatives to make those kinds of rings and then maybe the rarer gems it has to be a, a gem of a certain size to be able to hold the magic. So it's much harder to find the ruby ones, but you can get a, a quartz one pretty easily. So things like that might make for some interesting discussions in you know how to make things in a world. It's just an idea. Um, there's a lot to quartz, uh, and more than I could probably cover here. Some of it, like the whole piezoelectric thing, Honestly, a lot of the the science in that goes above my head. And so if you're watching this and you're a good science person, I'm talking to you, George, uh, you know, start think, yeah, maybe do a corollary, talk about the science of how that works. But, um, you know, the, the f fact is that it is so broad that there are so many versions of it between the, the normal rock crystal version and the uh, uh, Castledani and uh, the crypto crystalline versions, uh, you know, there's such a broad breadth of what you can use quartz for. If you want a magic heavy world, have quartz be the basis for all your magical gemstones. It makes a certain amount of sense. And, uh, you know, you can, invest a bunch of different properties to it based off of the area you're pulling it from you know if it has maybe it has stri strips of gold in it and that gives you luck so you could maybe make a an item that gives you some sort of luck effect using just the gold embedded quartz as your gemstone something like that um, it, it, it's so broad that there are so many possibilities to quartz that I think it makes it an ideal choice. Um, it's not like jade where it has a long history of being used utilitarian, although there are some utilitarian things. Uh, it is not as useful as things like, I can make a bowl out of this in a cup. You can, but they're not good ideas <laughs> it's, it's where I'm at it's not it's not really what you want to do um, there are a lot of mythical traditions uh, that's uh, both uh, you know Western uh, judeo-christian traditions that uh, talk about certain forms of uh, quartz as having mystical characteristics there are some Aboriginal myths about quartz having uh, mystical characteristics so it does also cross into the sort of cultural uh, touchstones of various different magical traditions as well. So I think I'm going to wrap up 
my talk about uh, quartz on that. Um, you know, I, I guess I, I this episode I was more sort of I'm going to toss a bunch of ideas at you and a bunch of notions about how crystals are uh, are cool, how quartz crystal is cool, and what makes it interesting, and hopefully gave you some ideas. That's my my hope. Uh, I think the next time I'm going to do a gemstone that's a little more specific, a little less, oh, this is uh, everywhere and there are all these other kinds of forms of it. I may pick something smaller just to sort of give contrast in the next one, uh, the next time I do a ma magic or crystal stuff. There is a playlist that I've started on the website. Uh, I've also, uh, uh, of course, uh, started sharing all my information for the socials and the in the show notes so there's that and feel free to subscribe like share with all the peoples tell me I'm an idiot that's that's certainly possible uh, tell me what gemstones you'd like to see me talk about because there are a lot of them and maybe not everybody knows about them you know like you may have heard of rubies uh, but you don't know the history of them and where they come from and things like that. So, anyway, so that's my discussion, and let me know what you think. And stay safe. It's a scary world out there, kids. Try and enjoy yourselves. I'll talk to you later. Bye.